Welcome to the House of Ideas. The House of Ideas is a creative environment without distraction in nature. It's where the right people can work together and build the next big thing as a community. My name is Wolfgang Geram, and I'm the source, the founder of this dream. It's still not true, but it will be. And for that, I'm inviting amazing talents, thought leaders, and thinkers and coaches from all around the world to basically work with me on this dream. Today, I have the honor to have Christina Peters from Hamburg, Germany, here on the show. Yes, hi Wolfgang, and thank you for inviting me today. <laughs> nice. Alles gut. So today I have the honor with you, Christina, and uh, your mentor and also coaching consultants for purpose and high performance. Thank you for joining me on this wonderful journey to build the house of ideas. And um, yeah, I'm, and also everybody is really curious to know more about you. Why did you take the path of coaching consultants for purpose and high performance? So uh, the part that led me to um, to my role as a mentor and uh, as a coach uh, has actually started, yeah, maybe a few years back, but uh, certainly last year uh, with Corona starting. And as a consultant, you usually, you know, you've got so much to do. You're traveling all week long, and you've hardly got a minute to to rest and reflect. Um, but Corona did give me that time, um, and I actually started. Um, started getting involved more into, into coaching and personal development um, alongside also thinking about my next 10 years uh, a career step and also how I might be able to help uh, transition our economy and society to a more uh, regenerative and, and sustainable uh, way of living and, and doing business. Mm. Uh, and this is how I find my role. Um, mm. So I've, I've got a career of uh, 10 plus years in, in consulting. So I know the consulting world in and out and um, almost everyone is leaving at some point um, or also looking to, uh, to make an impact um, within the company, with the teams, and also with clients. Um, so there's a lot of systemic thinking going on, um, but often not that much room for oneself to really um, dig deeper and think about um, the purpose and how you might want to make a difference with your work also on a daily basis. So that's what I want to help with. And I wonder, like, as a consultant, you have so many mythologies, so much wisdom, you're advising and consulting the world what makes it so hard for consulting for, for a consultant to consult themselves so why do they need you so how can you companion them on this journey yes i think for one it's really making the time um, and this is what every one of us is responsible for, our own calendars. What's not mm -hmm. in the calendar usually doesn't get done. Um, so really making that space and taking the time for your personal development. And on the other hand, I think it's also... Um, kind of um, getting, tapping into that inner creat creativity again and uh, letting yourself, um, yeah, dream and think differently. Yes, as a consultant, you also, you learn to think differently and, you know, develop new strategies, work with new teams, et cetera. So your comfort zone is constantly being stretched. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's more that kind of inner, more playful and dreamy self that we usually, whenever we are in a, you know, 20 and just getting stuff done mode, um, that just doesn't happen. Yeah. Mm. And uh, also be more yourself. So that's the ultimate aim. Um, you know, to do your best work, you need to be your best self and you need to know yourself um, and try and be your most authentic self because that's when you will excel in whatever it is uh, in your life. Yeah. Mm. You mentioned the word travel. And when we spoke last week, you said you, you were throwing a word. It was transformational travel. Mm -hmm. And I was like, transformational travel? Tra I love traveling and it's all about transformation. And I could totally see, my, like I had a flashback in my life, how life travel transformed me. And then you said, yeah, yeah, Wolfgang, but it's something 
different than that. <laughs> and this made me curious. And so I would like to learn about from you today, or if you could share, like, what do you know about transformational travel? What is transformational travel? What is it good for or not? And um, maybe we can see, is this something which could be interesting to take place uh, in the house of idea, or maybe the house of idea becomes a transformational travel. So wherever it leads us, I'm in it. So <laughs> the stage is yours, transformational travel. What the heck is transformational travel? Yeah, that's a very good question. And um, I also stumbled upon it a few years back um, because I'm a travel, uh, not addict, but I'm, I, I love traveling myself and I've lived abroad an for quite a few years. Hmm? I'm an addict. You're an addict, okay. <laughs> um, and the the thing is that I was always looking for, not always, but um, sometimes really looking for a place, a group of people, and really something to learn, something to learn to expand my my personal horizon whilst traveling. And of course, travel in itself has got a certain element of that because mm. usually even if you know where you're going still you, there will be lots of unknown of what can happen um throughout travel yeah before during and and after and um the idea of transformational travel is really that a person intentionally is going traveling in order to transform and grow as a person. Mm. So um, there is an, uh, an outer journey. Yes, you go to a certain place, you meet certain people, um, but there is also an inner um, journey to transformational travel that is mm. really important, um, which is allowing for that reflection, but also experiences to to properly grow and, for example, um, go out of your comfort zone or um, experience and get in touch with a certain community that is entirely different to what you've, what you've known so far or to um, experience nature in a way you have never been able to do that, you know, being from, from Germany. I mean, there is a, you know, a house every well, I wouldn't say, but every kilometer in Germany almost. So there is no no real space in between. Yeah, we are never alone. Yeah. Nature. Yeah. Wild nature, for example, as you, you've got it in some uh, remote parts of the world still. And I think it's um, it's really about that intention, also intention setting at the beginning of a trip. So what do I really want to experience? What am I looking for? Am I, for example, um, being... Um, at the edge of, of a certain transformation in my life, um, you know, have I, am I changing um, jobs? Um, have I, am I separating? Is there something that I'm, you know, want to do differently or have to deal with? So in these, especially in these stages of life, it can be very, um, yeah, valuable to really just take that time off and uh, properly um, listen in and, and reflect and learn something new about yourself. So if I got it right, is if I have a, like a challenge in life, I will take that on a travel, on a journey. I don't, I don't see the outcome yet. So if I'm, let's say, I can say like, oh, I have this grief I'm from losing someone in my mm -hmm. life. So I don't know how life will be after, but just taking that on a, the, into this experience to somehow on the journey, on the really on the travel, like because it is included with travel. And you said visiting different places, which are different, uh, taking myself into different circumstances, mm -hmm. different environments. So new things will happen to me. So even that my, let's say my grief will transform differently in another place, in nature or a different community, than with uh, rather than staying uh, staying at home. Yeah, yeah. I think um, when we're traveling, we're generally speaking more open to change because we already experience, you know, certain change. Full stop. Um, 
I think um, you, you do not necessarily need to have a situation in which, you know, which is a, a very emotional situation as, as the, the grieving mm -hmm. period, for example, is. But this is also an example of where you can go and say, okay, I want to make this step and maybe get, get away a little bit in order to let go and maybe also um, get an idea of how my life is going to look like afterwards and maybe or celebrate the life mm -hmm. of that person that I had to let go, for example. Um, or if you're thinking about, you know, a new job phase, you know, you might want to um, also find out and gain more clarity about what your idea of success and your your life is in five or 10 years. I know that it was always a horror for me <laughs> to, <laughs> to have to answer these questions yeah. in job interviews or anything, because I just, I, I didn't know back then. Mm -hmm. um, and really uh, allowing for that, um, yeah, the, giving you that, that space and that different, uh, also sometimes group setting where um, you can really explore. Um, what mm -hmm. it is that you want to let go and also what it is that you want to draw into your life, which is uh, equally important. Is it a design journey or is it more, because I'm also thinking about the alchemist from Paulo Coelho mm -hmm. so, or like a pilgrim way. So like someone who says, I don't I mean, the pilgrim way, this is a design journey is going on the path to uh, Santa Campostela. Yeah. So You go on this pilgrim and it's three or or six weeks, wherever you start, and you have the hoods where you always go and everybody's um, on this pilgrim pass. And there's a final in the church of Santa Campostela. And so it's a designed pass, which I would like still like still thinking it could be a transformational travel. Maybe I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Or Yeah, or it's more open and like Paulo Coelho in The Alchemist, where he went on this journey through Morocco until Egypt. And basically, in the end, he found himself. Mm -hmm. So it was a complete open journey, but it was unguided. It was undesigned. It was like yeah. he thrown he, he threw his himself into it. So what is transformational travel? Like, well, how do you like, define there? How would you see it? But what, what I found interesting also, uh, the story about a lot of people go traveling to get away from their life, uh, whereas mm. transformational travel is really to find yourself more. Um, so if you cannot be alone with yourself, it, it might be difficult. Although transformational travel, it can be all kinds of different things. So you can travel on your own. Yeah. So there is this... Um, travel company in the US. So one of the founders, he's also been contributing to the, the overall transformational travel um, association and group that's currently forming, um, connecting different um, transformational travel individuals, smaller companies, coaches from around the world. And um, so he's even got this one thing where he's um, he's putting you somewhere in the wilderness and you have to find your, your way back. Yeah. So you are all on your own uh, with enough time to experience, get to know yourself and your, your limits wow. and, um, and get back. But there are also group settings in which you also, you can learn from, of course, the other participants in the group um, give each other a feedback, go through such a process together. So it really, it very much depends, but what all of these experiences have in common is that they allow for certain time, time for reflection with yourself. And of course that could be more or less guided uh, in terms of the questions that you can ask yourself or whether you decide on your own, how you use, for example, a certain morning in a, I don't know, beautiful garden or a, the seaside or interacting with a, with a community that's showing you how they, I don't know, dance, work, live, and what that can show you for your own, um, uh, your own life and, and, and purpose, et cetera. So it, it can really take up all kinds of different forms. Um, what is important is that there is a preparation element um, there is the experience as such, and then there is a, a, you know, a commitment or a transformational piece afterwards as well, because um, it wouldn't be transformational travel if the experience uh, would not um, reach into your, you know, your normal life, so to say, you know, would not 
last. Mm. Um, so the idea is uh, for people to really learn something new, adopt a new behavior, thinking, um, dreams that they can then afterwards also act upon. Mm. Um, so for example, one, um, one element is also, um, or yeah, it's a kind of more sustainable travel or really uh, supporting local communities um, that you might have been visiting. And there the idea is not just to bring the community and the traveler together, um, exchanging ideas, but it's also about how can they potentially um, stay in touch afterwards or help each other um, on a you know a longer term basis so that it's not just the old, you know, we go there and we we watch them for a day and then head off. And that, that's that's about that. Uh, it's more about um, really that spark of transformation and thinking differently and doing things differently mm. afterwards. Do you have like some example, because you mentioned some companies or organizations, if you could share something, um, it's, do you have a website or something we could just quickly have a look so that to to see like what's out there right yeah you can share Let me screen. Just quickly see yeah. whether i can pull it up all right just to give you a bit of an idea of where mm. you can find more information also um would be for one with the transformational travel council so that's really a group of passionate people that are currently trying to connect the dots and connect um people that are uh, working on transformational travel be that more from the transformation coaching side of things or from the travel side of things and um so here you can also see some of the the small businesses and allies how they are called um Uh, that you can you can explore and connect with and you can see they're sometimes very regional players or or not um i've selected some examples also for example this is a, a surf and yoga camp in costa rica um, which is um set up very sustainably um mm -hmm. and also uh, people going there i think they've got space for 12 people maximum mm -hmm. uh, and that was surf and yoga lessons and really connecting people also to um to the local community and encouraging them mm -hmm. to also um commit to living more sustainably whilst they're there experiencing it but also once back home and um making contributions also to um one of the projects that they've um they're investing in um They're also certified B Corporation, et cetera. Um, then there's also Explorer X, which I mentioned previously. Um, they are offering trips in different parts of the world and they are um, leaning more towards the adventure side, but not, not 100%. So you can also go to Sweden and you've got a, a really, um, yeah, a really, um, cool local guide um, with usually these people have got uh, lots of you know own personal stories and experiences that they are sharing uh, throughout the journey and off the beaten path um, so for example here um, sleeping in the outdoors um, jumping mm. into the ice water uh, but also local food um, so these are depending on the place etc very different experiences it looks so, and, Sweden, Sweden, Sweden looks so nice and then there are also associations um, here that really try to help uh, travel businesses become more sustainable like the long run for example um, which are also worth checking out um, really which are establishing a community a collective um, to push transformational travel. And if you want to start with just a very um, short description of what it is, et cetera, there's also a good um, article here that we can put a link in uh, later on um, for mm -hmm. you to get an idea. Mm. That's really interesting. So it seems that sustainability plays a huge role in it. Yeah. So like yes, certainly from from a from a from an environment point of view, but also from a social point of view. So part of the sustainability discussion is also about, you know, social uh, justice and also um, how communities are being strengthened through tourism and not weakened through tourism. tourism. Um, so you say sustainability plays a role, and 
Say it again. Well, sustain again. Sustainability covers off the environment and also social aspects. And mm -hmm. a lot of the times when um, in a specific area or a community, um, when they start living from tourism primarily, they start losing their culture and their community. And the idea of transformational travel is really to... Um, to working to work with the community and co-create uh, a travel experience and not just go there, give them some money, visit whatever it is and head off um, and for it to become a, okay, we, we've just been there uh, kind of experience, but rather a, a co-creation and a very respectful. So you're dealing. meaning both sides are basically transforming. Yes. So, because yeah. usually, let's say, if you go to a little village in Italy, mm -hmm. everybody goes there to have this authentic Italian experience. You don't want them to transform. They should always stay the same. Mm -hmm. So, because so you as a tourist or as an explorer, you want to have an authentic Italian little village experience. Mm -hmm. But of course, with all the people are coming, they are transforming. And as yeah. I understand, it's, it, it becomes a collaborative process, it's an open invitation that we both form and transform each other. That's correct. But nevertheless, the community and the place should still um, have enough space for itself and not fully, so to say, live from just tourism. So at least that's the, the idea of transformational travel to really ensure that the community in itself um, can or can sustain itself also and not tourism is is the the only thing that they're doing, but rather that they're 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 living in their community, they are doing what they've been doing, if that's possible. Um, And um, the, the, the tourism element is, is an experience and is a connection, but it's not the sole purpose of that community, if you know what I mean. Okay, so it's all about that. It's also about that the community stays independent themselves. Yes, exactly. Mm. So is it retreats or is it permanent places? Like, is it temporary or permanent? No, these are permanent places. Uh, this one particular one is a permanent place that was um, that was built. But they can also be temporary experiences. Why not? And not always does the community, the local community, play um, a core element. It could also be uh, more of a focus on on nature. Um, on the group itself, so that very much depends on 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 what it is that you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. So, if we would take that to the uh, combine this with the house of ideas, mm -hmm. right? So, what would could be options to to do? Do you briefly want to explain your idea of of the house of ideas? Yeah. So it's this creating this environment in nature where mm -hmm. it can work without distraction. On your, on your current concepts and challenges. Mm -hmm. I coming more from in the sense of when people have a dream they want to achieve and then you're, there is no clarity or no time to think it through or discuss it through. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's about creating this space where you take your, com your concept. Let's say, oh, I want to grow my business. Mm -hmm. For one example, it's really, so, but I have 20 ideas. I don't have no one to discuss it. Always there is this mentor who or someone gives you an advice, but then mm -hmm. they're gone. And then you're left with, so if I want to have this clear path, how can I grow my business? And mm -hmm. so I need others to discuss it. And also when I think what is growth and what, what comes with it, maybe growth has a huge impact on other people, environment. So, and by having this discussion, discussion with um, caring people, I might end up not growing or redefine my path of growth or, and then finding a different way of growth, which is more in line with my values where mm -hmm. I want to go. And for that, it's taking the time and a space to do that. Mm. What I hear is, is two, two things. So for one, the, the founder or the business owner to be um, more clear about their own values and what they are searching for in life mm -hmm. and 
connecting their business endeavors then to what it is that they're trying to achieve, what their purpose is, et cetera, um, and adjusting the strategy or or the the plans, et cetera, or what it might be. So mm -hmm. I think that those are, might be two slightly separate elements because the one is really tapping into yourself and getting yourself to know yourself better. Mm -hmm. And I think this is exactly the inner journey that I was speaking about um, before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other element is then really to align that inner um, that inner core, so to say, and what 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 you really want to what uh, what your business or what the business idea is. However, there are also then around the business a, a lot of outer criteria, right, in terms of the market and the competition. Yeah. And then it gets more, you know, you you can of course, discuss that then afterwards uh, quite well in a group setting, right? And if you've got certain people that have got uh, different or similar or whatever perspectives, then I think that can really, um, really be beneficial. And, and I think that's what the idea of um, the House of Ideas is all about as well, that people come together and um, challenge each other, help each other um, to gain more, more clarity about what that business could should look like in the future right i am totally with you but i'm so still so thrilled by what you showed today the house of idea was like an island in nature mm -hmm. but today you put a different seed in my mind in the mm -hmm. sense of how does it interconnect with the local community right mm -hmm. it's not we are not an aliens landing on whatever beautiful place in the world And it's like Jeep there for a couple of times and gone. No, there is something wrong. Like one thing is, of course, there's nature. Of where there's nature, there's there might be people. There's culture. How are they affecting the people who are coming? And how are we affecting that? And this is, I think, it's a really important part when you select a space that you mm. say. How can we collaborate? How can the House of Idea become part of that village, of that, that, of that community which is there? How can it interplay that, uh, which become, it can be really inspiring? Otherwise, it's, um, yeah, let's go somewhere really hidden, which has no contact to no, to no other culture. The culture is only inside the house, And then mm. there is nature, or should it be somewhere? Because if I put it in the Provence, then you have a certain culture. If I put it in Cape Town, I have a different culture around it. If you put it in a little village there, I have a certain culture. And so the surrounding the environment is working on the people, but they are also affecting the other way. Absolutely. And also, if the House of Ideas is a permanent location, then, you know, you There, there is sooner or later there is going to be an exchange right if if quite a few people are arriving and leaving and are just you know living in that space there is going to be certain kind of interactions so thinking about that in advance also and how how the community might um, welcome or not welcome I don't know <laughs> your house of ideas I think is is something worth worth thinking about yeah I traveled once with us. It's called the Startup Bus Africa. I was helping the young entrepreneurs to build, like to come up with a business idea and pitch in front of investors. The whole journey was on a bus. So we mm -hmm. traveled Morocco nine days. It's an amazing adventure. <laughs> But we traveled like, so we went to this little village and then the governor of the village um, or the mayor of the village says, hello, welcome. And then there were little families from the world that were cooking for us. Mm -hmm. And this was the amazing experience. Yeah. So we were kind of guests in their village. And this felt good. But then we took off and went to Casablanca, spent a day in one space. And mm -hmm. they were always hosting us. Mm -hmm. I felt we got a lot. Mm -hmm. But there was not this giving back so much. Mm -hmm. okay, we, there was this 
this honor of, of uh, appreciation. Thank you for hosting us. There was some money involved, so that this can provide some some um, economic benefits. But it was not weaved in. Mm-hmm. They were we were guests, and I think, and this is what I really got out from today. How can we interweave it in both times? And even if it's a week, mm-hmm. how can we connect? So how can the the environment cannot just give, also get? Yeah. Like and then, uh, yeah, and but that I think needs to happen then in conversation, right? In you know, respectful and level to level conversation with the local community. Yeah. Um, so it's not just a going there and offering money for you know certain thing, but rather a um, exploring how 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 that could look like and what would be of value also to the community. Because yes, for some community it might be financial means to to do some specific thing um, for the community. For others, it might be appreciation or then being able to cultivate their culture better or, or, or it might be that you could, you're able to teach them something that, you know, to run their business better, um, which they didn't have before. So point you said it all (laughs) just on the spot. Yeah. I will go on a travel now, like the next 10 days. I will travel to the to Switzerland, to some mountain village, like to some in a mountain village, and then to Lake of Como. I will look differently now through uh, through your our talk. What can we give them? It's about listening. And um thank you so much, Christina. This was such a um I'm really touched now, actually. It's just like, it just, um, it flipped uh, really one part of my world we completely, and it was, um, maybe I feel also a little bit ashamed in the sense of, I was so stuck on, uh, focused on the idea and the people I invited, I forgot them, the others. I, and I thought like I was thinking all the time about the others, but I didn't see the other others. And um so I'm really just just for that. This is uh, this is uh, wonderful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm looking forward to to yeah. hearing what uh, yeah. how the House of Ideas takes. Yeah, take you are, shape. yeah, you are truly a transformational coach, and I feel transformed <laughs> after this whatever like 30 minutes. So if someone wants to start digging deeper, we can mm-hmm. share these links. You shared the Forbes article and the website. I can share the links. Is there anything else if someone wants to dig deeper into transformational travel you would recommend or is this a good start? Mm, I think this is a very good start in terms of traveling. And and really, I think whenever you do travel, thinking more intentionally about what is it that you'd like to experience uh, during travel. Um, So really being very intentional about that. How would you like to, to feel uh, what would you like to happen? Um, I mean, we should do that in our everyday life also, but whilst traveling, also not just to go somewhere to get away from your life, but rather mm-hmm. thinking more intentionally about what you'd what you'd like to to feel, to experience, and also maybe, as you said, bring to the, yourself to the place um, mm-hmm. and give. So, um, I think that's that's really important. Mm. Thank you so much. So if someone wants to get in contact with you, may I share your LinkedIn contact? Yes, feel free to do that. If I can be of help, then yes, of course. To me, you've been a tremendous help. All right. Have a great, great day still, Wolfgang. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.